Hey guys, Micah here with Tap to California. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're finally covering my plate carrier setup. I've been getting questions for at least a year now asking people if I would go over how I set up my plate carrier. There's really nothing fancy about it, which is kind of why I've avoided it, but I got another question and I figured, what the heck, I'll go over it for you. Let's start at the basics. Let's go ahead and ditch this rifle. The plate carrier itself is a 511 Tac Tech plate carrier. This one's in their sand color. And I really like it for a few reasons. One in particular is that it suits my needs greatly. Uh, the webbing across the front is slightly wider than that on other plate carriers, which allows you to get four magazines across the front of the carrier instead of just three. Uh, so I really, really like that. That was one of the reasons I went for it. Another reason I went for it was it seemed very durable. And also the back of the straps is yoked. That helps you distribute the weight across your shoulders and really helps absorb impact when you, you know, you're coming down and you're going back up, whatever you doing going to a knee going prone coming up uh you know all this weight's on your shoulders and that yoke really helps distribute it evenly and help absorb some of that shock the inside of the carrier is lined with some airflow stuff which is really nice and the sides of it are bungee which is really cool because most plate carriers you want to get them real nice and solid real tight to your, your chest and what happens is if you get it too snug to where it won't move around and, and chafe you it's actually restricting your lungs from fully expanding and compressing, which is uh, limiting your breathing, which can fatigue you very quickly and you can even pass out if it's on too tight. So what the bungee does is allows the carrier to get snug to your system while still giving you full expansion, uh, lets you breathe, move around a little bit, gives you a little bit more mobility. I really like that about this carrier. Now far and away, one of the most important components of a plate carrier is gonna be your plates. The plates I decided to go with were AR500 steel. It's not from AR500.com or AR500 Armor. These are from a company called Spartan, and I'll leave a link to their website down in the description box below. The reason I went with Spartan was a couple reasons. One, it seemed like they were using a little bit higher quality material on the outside to protect against spalling and it's a little thicker than some other companies might choose to use. Also, I saw some pretty gnarly torture tests. These are rated level three, but they took a massive beating. They went all the way up to 338 Lapua, uh, which it stopped 338 Lapua, uh, but the kinetic energy from the plate hitting you would kill you anyway. And then it, it eventually broke in half with a 50 cal. So, but it was a really cool torture test nonetheless. And I thought these plates take a little more beating. So why not spend a little bit more money and get those? Also, one of the greatest features about this carrier is that it has a shooter's cut. Now, some plates just have a nice shooter's cut where it comes up and then it goes 45 to the top. What this one does, it actually curves at the top slightly and then curves underneath your shoulders. The reason I like this curve is so I can have a full range of motion. If I was to bring up a pistol and extend it, my arms aren't getting obstructed by my plate carrier. So I really, really dig that. It's one of the features I really like about this plate uh, setup as well. Also, I'm running trauma pads behind them. I'm a firm believer that if you're gonna be running AR500 plates, which is an inexpensive option, spend a little bit more money and get the trauma plates. If you, if you look at the kinetic energy of what the plate's taking, it's a massive amount of force and to put a trauma plate behind that, it's simply just gonna cushion that blow. It's gonna help take that kinetic energy and spread it across the entire plate carrier, which is really gonna help absorb a lot of that shot. Now what everyone wants to know, right? How do you run it? I run it super slick and there's nothing fancy about the way I run my plate carriers. In fact, it's kind of boring. Uh, but what I've done here is I've run four HSGI taco pouches on the front. Those are my go-to pouches. I'm gonna show you guys why I dig them. So these are AR-15 magazines, obviously. They can come out, they go in. Uh, they, they're super minimalist, but you can do everything one-handed, which is great. Some uh, magazine pouches, they tend to collapse when you pull the magazine out, they'll collapse and it's kind of hard to get your magazine back in, but I have no problem putting any magazine in or out with one hand. So I really, really like this carrier. Another reason I went with the tacos is because I have multiple different guns with multiple different style of magazines and the taco will accommodate all of them. I have it set to attention right now. That's exactly the retention I want with AR mags. I'm just gonna go ahead and take one out. I'm gonna take an AK mag. No problem. So now if I wanna run my AKs, whether forward, or backward, doesn't really matter. Either way, uh, this, this, these, this carrier is definitely cool. Here's a 308 magazine, 7.62 by 51. A lot of people said these won't fit in these pouches, but one-handed, they fit just fine. So again, forward or backward, really doesn't matter. 
Magazines fit fine. So that's why I went with the HSGI mag pouches. They simply make sense to me. These talkers work great for a wide variety of magazines and they're incredibly slim and low profile. I really like that. I'm also running HSGI's pistol magazine pouches on the side. I'm wearing just two of them. They're Glock 17 mags. I usually keep them in there because I have a Glock 26, 19, and 17. So they'll all use 17 mags. So why not just leave a couple 17 mags on you just in case. Other than that, I have a Magpul MS3 sling and I've attached this to my carrier by stringing it up through where a hydration hose would go through. And then I use a D-ring on the back made by ITW. It's the same company that make fast mag pouches. And they're these really inexpensive, cool little molly clips that go through your molly webbing. And then you can clip things to them while it's on your vest. So that's how I've secured it to the back. And then I've secured it to my shoulder over this way. And the reason I do this is twofold. One, now I always have a sling on the carrier so I can always sling whatever gun I need to sling. And two, this keeps it off my neck. It puts it on my shoulder so that the sling's not constantly digging into the side of my neck and cutting off my circulation. That's pretty much it, guys. My medical kit, spare, uh, some more spare ammo hydration that's all in a backpack if I'm gonna put that on on top of this then I'm really really in trouble but this is just a slick way how I do it if you like this video please click like down below subscribe to the channel for more content like this check us out on patreon.com at patreon.com slash tactic California Facebook at tactic California and Instagram at tactic California underscore also please use our discount code TCA5 for 5% off your entire order at opticsplanet.com you can get pouches stuff like that over at their website so definitely go over there and save some money I'm Michael with tactic California Thanks for watching.